Hey, <clears throat> welcome back. Sorry, I still don't have my uh, sound equipment from down at the shop, so this is just being recorded with the mic that's on my phone. Uh, I was wanting to get an update out about my hip replacement at the uh, at the two week mark because it's now been well tomorrow. It's Sunday right now, and tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon will be three weeks for my surgery. So I wanted to uh, kind of give a little update of things and uh, talk about a few items I wrote down. Um, but at the two-week mark, like I said, I got surgery on Monday. And by the next Monday, I was still pretty sore and hurting. Um, and by the uh, uh, middle of that week, though, I thought I was so messed up the pain medicine just makes you feel horrible. I don't like the pain medicine, so I thought I'll quit the pain medicine. That lasts about a day and a half, and I just had to go back taking it. I was once this stuff kind of got out of my system, it really started hurting. But by the middle to end of the second week, and really into that next this the end of the second week, I got into the to the weekend before the two week mark on a Monday I was I was getting down depressed um, I was hurting and uh, you know I was trying to walk around but you know I'd heard stories of people that they say, like, oh I got home and you know as soon as I got home I did away with my walker and here I am at two weeks still using it you know at the time I actually went two and over two and a half weeks still using my walker I'm, I'm off of it now I'm on a cane but uh, that just started a few days ago, and then uh, and people I I knew you know, on social media and stuff on Facebook and that we were talking you know people were talking about joint hip replacements and that oh it was great I didn't have any pain um, you know one guy said yeah I went as soon as I got through I was feeling so good I went and walked nine miles my legs swelled up they thought I had you know blood clot but. Uh, everything, you know, but it turns out I just overdid it because I wasn't walking so much and here I'm like, you know, walking a hundred feet and I'm hurting and uh, thinking, what am I doing wrong, you know, and same, uh, some other people was like, oh, you know, in a week I was this way, in two weeks I'm out back to normal and I'm two weeks, I'm still on a walker, barely getting around, so I was actually getting depressed, I was down, I was still hurting, still on pain medicine, I was like, maybe they did something wrong, I started doubting what the doctor did I had you know I didn't have I didn't have hip pain going into this uh mine was damaged and it caused me to walk with a limp which hurt everything else so I you know people are like oh as soon as you get to hip replaced you're going to get rid of that hip pain well I didn't have hip pain so now I got and the thing is is after my pain, hip pain my knee was killing me and it's a bad knee needs replaced anyway but it was killing me and uh all my physical therapy, everything was hurting more in my thigh and in my knee. So going forward, like I said, I went all weekend. So I went in to see my physical therapy. I've been going physical therapy three times a week uh, up until this point. And I went in, uh, actually Monday was a holiday. I went in Tuesday for physical therapy and uh, one of the ladies was doing my physical therapy and I walked in I told her I was in a lot of pain. I've been trying, I thought, I thought, you know, I, maybe I'm not doing enough exercises, and that's why I'm not progressing. And so I tried over the weekend. I was doing extra exercises and whatever I could do. It wasn't a whole lot more. It wasn't like I was just exercising all day long. <clears throat> and so I got in there, and I told her, you know, how I hurt all weekend, really even worse than the week before. And I was uh, about being kind of down because I wasn't progressing. And she just kind of, you know, straightened me out. She said, you know, I was really actually doing good because I could lift my leg up onto, you know, the table myself. I could lift my leg up off the table. I could lift, actually lift my leg up, my foot and knee and everything, you know, just lift it up, set it on the table, set it off, you know, lift it over, you know, off the table, do all that kind of stuff. And she said there's people at two weeks that she's known that she'd have to lift their leg. They couldn't do it themselves. So she said she gave me an A minus. 
he said, uh, I give you an A because, uh, you know, you're doing great. I give you a minus because you're trying too hard. I was doing too much exercises. And so is another guy there. Uh, just a couple different, there's two or three different uh, physical therapists I see. Mainly the guy I see, uh, Brad, he, uh, he did a, uh, he worked with me. He said, yeah, I was doing too much and I need to, you know, I was pushing out too far with my leg and I was walking with too big of a stride. He said, cut everything down. And they were all telling me, cut it down, don't do so much. So basically, I got home that Monday, and I did nothing, no more exercises Monday evening. And I got up Tuesday, and I said, I'm not doing any exercise today. I'm just going to rest. And so Tuesday, I just basically just laid around all day. It's been pretty boring. But that Tuesday was the best day I had in two, well, two weeks and a day from surgery. And it was, uh, it was nice. And so... I, uh, so I thought, okay, maybe I had overdone it some. So since then, it's, it's all been improving a lot better. And the therapy, physical therapy has been great. Uh, I go to TriStar Physical Therapy and it's Stonecrest Hospital in Smyrna. But I go to them. They, they were great with my shoulder. I mean, my shoulder's just like 100%. And now they're doing my hip. And they do a really good job and um, a really nice bunch of people. And so um, I go there and uh, uh, so I, I've been doing what they've been telling me to do and I've been watching what I've been doing and I'm trying to overdo it. And, and then I went to see the doctor. It was actually, they wanted to go two weeks after it. By the time they got me, the doctor got me the appointment, it was actually two and a half because I said I got surgery on Monday and I went two weeks and then to the next Thursday. So it was almost two and a half weeks, two weeks and three days. And I went and saw the doctor. And he's, he's a real good doctor. It's Dr. Rob, R-A-A-B. He's with Elite Sports Medicine in Nashville. And uh, by then, my hip, it just felt like I was sitting on a, a big wallet or something. It was like a knot on the side of my backside here that in my hip. And... Just to, like the day before I went to see him, it pretty much went away. And so um, I was telling him about all, all this stuff I'm telling you. And he said, he said, you know, one, he said, he, he actually got a clear plastic hip with a real prosthetic in it. And he showed, you know, like they drill, he didn't remember the sizes on me, but say they drill a 15 millimeter hole down into the bone. And it could be, you know, down in a good ways down into your femur after they cut that off. And he says that the piece going in is more like a, you know, it's just like a spline. It's got like teeth coming off, like gears, but coming all the way up the entire shaft. And so they'll drill a 15 millimeter hole, but that might be almost, you know, 15 and three quarters of a millimeter diameter. So the splines are actually digging into the bone, all inside the bone is just going all the way in and they have to hammer that in all the way. And he said the same with the hip, the hip is actually drilled out for the socket smaller than what that is and they have to hammer that in and it's porous so that the bone will grow to it but the um, but he says it's very brutal and he says they'll tell you any surgery you do on a joint the next closest joint suffers so he says that's why my knee which is already bad is uh, hurting so bad he says because that knee takes so much abuse from them having to lift and twist and and you know, smash that, uh, smash that bone, and uh, and how they have to twist your leg at an angle to pop that joint out and do all this stuff. He says your, your knee takes it, and he says if you have a knee replacement, your ankles are going to hurt. So just remember that if you're going to do it. So they don't tell. They, nobody told me how that part. They never told me that when you got my hip replaced or when I go get my knee replaced, it's going to hurt the joint next to it so bad. And so. They took the steri, steri strips off of my incision. My incision about nine and a half inches long at my side of my hip. Um, I had a posterior or whatever they called it. It came in the, the back side of my hip, kind of, sort of. Uh, and uh, so I got the incision, but the stitches don't come out. They just, I guess, dissolve or something. It's like an inside stitching or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, I was doing too much, had all this pain, it was causing extra pain, so I stayed on my, still taking my pain medicine even today, uh, so I can't drive, um, that, uh, uh, 
pain medicine will stay in you. He, he said, you got to be off it for two days because if I'm in a wreck, even though they say take every four hours, it stays in your system for 48 hours. And so if I'm in a wreck and they did blood work and I'd come back positive, I'd get a DUI. So I had to be off pain medicines and off, off a walker for so many days before I'm allowed to drive. And they, if you've had a, a right hip done in the, you know, in the U.S., since we drive on the left, the left side of the car, we use our right foot for the gas and everything, and you have to get in with the right side um, of your body onto the left side of the car, but the right side of your body, you, they want you to go four to six weeks before you start driving um, with your, uh, if you had a right hip done. If you had a left hip done, they want you to go four weeks. Excuse me. But he got to me, he said, yeah, I was doing too much. He said, I just need to let the body heal. He said, that just takes time. And everybody heals at a different rate. And some people do come in and they're way further along in a couple of weeks than and other people or take even longer than it's taken me. He said, but everybody wants to be a superhero, which I guess that's what I was looking at. And he said, I'm going to go have the surgery and I'm going to be back at you know, work in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to be doing this in two weeks and I'm going to be doing that. And that's that was my mentality. <clears throat> and when it didn't happen, that kind of led me to be in pretty down. And and so anyway, that was just one of those factors. <clears throat> but I'm doing good now. So um, but another thing he brought up, he says, you got to watch what people say that are talking to you that had hip replacements four or five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, there's a term for it. I forgot to look it up. If I could think of it, I'll look it up and put it down here. But uh, there's a term for it. But it's basically, it's like, um, it's when the, something good comes out of a bad pain. And it's always, um, you know, related back or analogous to uh, a childbirth. Not that I would know about it, but, you know, uh, but, as he put it, he said his wife, when they were having their first child, his wife, her, his wife was like, you know, this is all your fault. I'm never doing this again. And she was a misery. And she says, now they got five kids. Um, but it's this, it's the same thing. You you go through all the suffering, but you got something good out of it at the end. You get this, you know, for a childbirth, you get a baby. For a hip replacement, you went through all the suffering, but now you got this good hip and you can walk good again. And after so much time you forget the pain or you forget that maybe the first two weeks or three weeks was rough. And all of a sudden it's maybe only the first week seemed rough, but some people do, you know, a lot better, faster. And apparently I just had to get used to that. And I just wasn't, uh, I was wanting to be one of the ones that got, you know, back on my feet, back in the shop, doing what I wanted to do, going to work. And, uh, instead of sitting around using a walker for two and a half weeks, but I, once I realized, you know, it's okay, what I'm doing is okay, I'm progressing okay, um, I was fine after that. So, you know, just, just remember that. If, you know, you take, if you get in sooner, great. If you, if you get, take longer, don't let it bother you. It's just going to take longer. But do do the exercises. Just don't overdo the exercises like I was doing. I'm back to doing my normal exercises they gave me, and I try to just do what they tell me to do. And then, of course, I'm going three times a week, so I'm getting plenty of exercises just from the therapy, but I try to do them at home in between. I don't do them, if I go to therapy and do exercises, I don't do them when I get home because I don't want to overdo it. So in between therapy is when I do my exercises. I did them yesterday. I still have to do them today, but it won't take long. <laughs> um, but, you know, just know that everybody progresses differently. And what the doctor said, he says, I don't care if you're one of the people that get better sooner or you're one of the people that get better a little later he said by the 12 week mark is what they kind of they go by when you hit 12 weeks that's like the key time he says everybody is the same so you know it's some people may get there a little quicker but by 12 weeks everybody's the same and so everything's working out a lot better my strides getting better i'm walking with this cane now i can actually move my leg backwards where i couldn't do that before um, as I was walking, I could, I, uh, I, I still have to learn to walk without a limp. I still have to learn how to, to take a regular normal stride walk, which, uh, I've forgotten over the, the years of this thing hitting, um, my, uh, 
not only did they have arthritis built up, bone spurs, which is just arthritis built up, but I had it all the way around the ball, which they cut off. I had it all the way around the socket, and they had to go in. And, and he says that's really common, though, when you got all this arthritis in your hip. And he said they had to go around and chip away all that arthritis around the socket before they can fix it. <clears throat> so my... I guess it's pubic bone or whatever, that bone across the front of you. It felt like somebody took a sledgehammer to it. And my thigh aches, my knee hurts, and they're all aching less. And I'm down to, I just take a pain pill at night when I go to sleep. I can go all day now, and I'm thinking about not taking any more pain pills even at night. <clears throat> and uh, seeing how I sleep. Uh, but everything's going a lot better now. And like I said, Tomorrow will be three weeks, and uh, and it, it really for me it, instead of you know hitting everything really good at two weeks like I thought I would, it's just taken the third week. And I guess I would have thought I was thinking it, the way I feel now is how I would have felt last week, is why I was down. And uh, and then I watch a lot of YouTube videos as you can because I also do these. Uh, the YouTube videos, I was watching all these people out in their shops working, and, and that's almost like a torture because I want to go out in my shop. I got all these ideas I want to do. I got all this I want to do, and, and I ain't even been out of the house other than to go to physical therapy. <clears throat> so, uh, or go on the front porch or something, but it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit here, which is what 30 something Celsius. I don't even know. Uh, and the heat index has been around 100 or more degrees Fahrenheit. So it's, uh, my mom's in town, and as she, she went out on the front porch. She said it, it was so hot it was hurting her eyeballs. <laughs> so and I, it's about right. It's just miserably hot out. And uh, so I've just been staying inside, watching stuff on YouTube. And for the first two weeks, I was taking pain pills. I, I was taking, instead of taking one to one and a half, as they said, I was taking half at a time during the day as I thought I needed them. Like I take a half where I went to therapy and a half for this. And if I come home hurting, I take a half. Um, and then I would take a whole one at night. And then uh, uh, when I, uh, but with uh, like, let's say, okay, Friday, when I went to therapy Friday, I did not take a pain pill and did fine. And so I'm, I, I quit taking them during the day. Didn't take any during the day yesterday. So I'm trying to get myself off of them. I just don't like the way they make me feel. I think, you know, they got a lot of side effects. And uh, I don't know how people can get addicted to them. It's so many side effects. It drive me crazy. But I guess it happens. But anyway, I was just let, wanting to let you know all the progress things. Now, this is a long video about hip replacement, but it's almost two weeks. This is the two-week and the three-week kind of update. Two-week, I was down, depressed, hurting. Still had the knot sticking out the side from all the swelling. My leg ached. My knees killed me. My knee killed me. <clears throat> and I uh, still, was still on a walker. Uh, but this past week, it's really improved a lot. And seeing the doctor helped me a lot. And he's real patient. He's, he just sat down and talked and answered all my wife and I's questions. And, and never acted like he was in a hurry to run, us out, you know, run out and to the next patient. It made it longer. We actually had to wait almost an hour to see him. But you know, when he does like that, that's just the way it goes because people ask him a lot of questions. But it helped us. Really helped us to uh, understand what's going on. I really started wondering if something went wrong with the thing. I started wondering. I was wondering if they did it right. If they, if he knew what he was doing. I mean, I had all kinds of things going on in my head that, at that two week mark. And uh, by the time I went and saw him, you know, I was doing fine. So. <clears throat> Anyway, like I said, this is a long video, and I hope to get back in the shop sometime, but it's probably going to be, you know, a few more, well, I said a few more weeks, I don't even know. I was going to go back to work after four weeks, and, and he did, he wants me to wait to the six-week mark uh, so that I can, um, he just basically, he says, my job for the first six weeks, and he wants to be 12 for most people, but since I have a sit-down doing computer programming job, I can even work from home. He said, but he said the first six weeks he wants me to, my job, my full-time job is to, to heal and get better. And if I push too much, I can actually tear their stitching 
<coughs> layer that's just above the, the joint. They have to they go kind of between the muscles to get to the joint. But then there's a layer of whatever they have to cut through that's uh, just outside the joint. And when they put the new joint in, they sew that up. And that helps hold the joint in place so they don't pop out on you. But you can do too much and tear that open. Of course, then they don't know it because it's way deep down in there. And you uh, you can end up messing yourself up. Uh, and then your joint will have a tendency, more of a tendency to pop out later. So, you know, just let it heal. Take the time. Don't push it. It'll be, you know, another week or two ain't going to make that big a difference for me or for anybody else that's doing this. And uh, the other thing which I, I thought, you know, I had to worry about sepsis and staph infections and all that getting in my joint during this healing process from the surgery from the hospital. And it's not the case. I mean, you can't get it from all that, but it's also from uh, uh, a lot from the mouth. They said if you have any kind of uh, infection in your mouth, uh, something about it, I guess being near the bones, uh, it, you know, if you have like respiratory infections, not doesn't really matter. But if you get like in your mouth, you get abscesses or anything, so that can travel and it'll get in your bloodstream. He says and it'll hunt that those metal joints and it'll get in there. And I guess it could be a year or two from now. I could end up getting us an infection in a joint and they have to go back in and clean it all out, have to cut it all open and clean it all out. Because you can't just take antibiotics to for a joint replacement. They actually have to go in there and flush it all out and clean it. Sometimes they actually take the metal out and um, put some kind of an antibiotic, 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 I can't even talk this morning, uh, block in between the joints and you have to sit in a wheelchair because you have no joint, you can't walk. Uh, until that takes place, could be however long, could be weeks, I guess. And then they had to go back in, put all the metal back in, and start all over again. And I don't even want to get to that. So for the rest of my life, I get my teeth cleaned, I get a filling, I get a crown, I get anything on my teeth for the rest of my life. I have to, and they'll give me a prescription for the rest of my life, that I have to take this like high single-dose antibiotic the day before I go to the dentist. And he'll, he says, you know, if I ever, he'll give me prescriptions after the, the 12 week mark and for all that stuff. And then, um, I have to go and, uh, let's see at the 12 week mark then, and then I have to keep taking it. And when I run out, I just call the office and they'll call in some more. And it's just going to be the way I had to do it for the rest of my life. And uh, if I get my knees done, they want to do both my knees, but I haven't, I wanted to see how my hip getting replaced helps my knee right now. It's like, I'm ready to get my knee replaced just cause it hurts so bad. But then after this pain in my hip, I'd be like, I don't want to get my knee replaced cause it hurts so bad. <clears throat> and the hip isn't as bad as the knee. The knee hurts more than the hip. Therapy wise, I could see where this hip therapy is going to go pretty quick. Cause I see people in their knees and they have to go through a lot more. And the physical therapist said knees are more therapy than the hips. And the shoulder is more therapy if you have rotator cuff like I did. Some people I've run into have shoulder replacement, and that's even worse. But rotator cuff uh, has even longer therapy than the hip and the knee. But it's just not as painful of a surgery. It doesn't last long. It's painful the first couple of days in your shoulder, but it's not as like the hip or the knee. So, but I've got all kind of stuff for blacksmithing and welding. I got a bunch of welding projects I want to do. I got some blacksmithing projects I want to do. I got some challenges I'm going to get out there and I'm going to work with some other makers and uh, I got some challenges I want to do and I'll, I'm will i going to make a few things uh, to see getting back in shape uh, forging and then um, and try to learn how to make some things I got some ideas for and then I'll have the challenge and I'm going to challenge a bunch of people uh, just for fun. Just something to do. But it's something I want to get back in the forge, especially when the weather starts cooling off here in the fall here in the United States and it's getting colder. I know in Australia and other places, a lot of blacksmiths I follow are over in Australia, but I know over in Australia, sorry, letting my camera lean over in Australia and stuff. I know they're coming into, into summer there. And so it's going, it's all backwards, but y'all have a blessed day. 
hang in there. It does get better. Might be the three week mark, but it does get better. And, uh, and do your exercises and do what the physical therapist says and you'll do fine. Y'all take care. Have a blessed day.